Welcome back to yet another Tracy Boards Basement Battle. And the foolishness that you are witnessing right now at the start of this match is uh, what they would call a diddle for the middle when all four players shoot at the same time. And the way it works is whoever ends up closest to the center gets to choose which team starts first. So gets to choose which team has the hammer, uh, hammer advantage in that first round. So um, now what's going on is a little bit of a discussion, a plan for the evening. There were three matches that took place in this evening. Each match was a different set of partners. So match number one, as you can see from the, the score pad up there in the right corner, is Jeremy Tracy and Ron Langell. We'll call them Team Canada against uh, Simon Dowrick and Sir Lord Mark Boot. So we'll call them uh, Team England as uh, these two blokes do hail from England. And uh, yeah, the match started with Jeremy missing an open 20 and then Simon going after a drift 20, aggressive as he always is. And uh, then Ron Langell went for a follow through and missed slightly. So at this point, the uh, the Brits have the hammer advantage, so Jeremy went for a little bit of an assist there. He was trying to, it was not bad assist, setting Ron up for his future shot. The nice thing about this is that Simon has very, very little opportunity to run interference on that. So let's see if Ron, Ron is able to capitalize. He didn't get the off, so now Green has the hammer and they also have two buttons on. So if Lord Boot can drain this 20, <laughs> that was, uh, as our friend John Conrad would say, unorthodox but effective. Uh, so now they're tied in the 20s, and Green still has still had two on. Um, yeah, the uh, the team Tracy, uh, sorry, team Canada is digging a bit of a hole here. But uh, let's see if Ron. I think they're talking about Ron coming wide to try to do a, a ricochet angle in 20 off that one in the 10. We'll see. We'll see what he decides to go with. I think they're also talking about the possibility of him going for a double ricocheting off that one in the five. Okay, maybe he was going for the ricochet and also an assist. One of the things you'll find in a, in a basement battle like this, uh, the play I believe you'll find is maybe a little bit slower than in a typical NCA match, and you'll also see a little more reckless abandon going after so a little more creative shot. So. There was Jeremy trying to get some pin action coming back in for a 20 and, and did a nice job of setting Simon up for the 20, which he took advantage of. So Now we are tied in the 20 count, and Tracy and Langell have one on, but uh, the challenge is that Dowrick and Boot have the hammer advantage in this first round. That was a, a tough leave, a tough leave for Boot, and he... he it's going to say he missed, but he hit the peg. So now if Jeremy can drain this 20, which he does, that puts them in, in pretty decent shape. So puts a bit of pressure on Simon. Simon's going to need a 20 to, to even out the 20 count in this match. Oh, that was a very good try. Just a little bit off on his angle. I think he needs to rewatch our, uh, our ricochet 20. Now, what I think Ron is trying to do here is hit that. Oh, he, yeah, that's exactly what he was trying to do. He was trying to do a hit and roll out, but he just rolled a little too far. So right idea, just a little too much oomph. And Mark Boot makes him pay for that mistake by draining the open 20, evening that, uh, evening that 20 count. Now, as sometimes happens, this looks like this round is going to end with a 20s race. Simon, true to form, drains that open 20. Oh, Ron came up a little bit short. Now all uh, Lord Boot needs to do is get the off, keep his shooter on, and they will have successfully won this first round. Well, he didn't get the off, but he was able to uh, knock it down into the 10, so... Boot and Dowrick win the first round. They go up 2-0 in this match, which uh, each of these three matches is a race to nine. Again, just trying to simulate that tournament feel, the NCAA tournament feel of uh, not just a regular four-round match, but a, a race to nine in each one of these matches, just, just to make it feel a little more competitive and, uh, yeah, just to extend the game and get more, more Crokinole in. 
Simon up opens up with an open 20. Good answer from Ron. Boot come up a little strong on that one. So uh, as far as misses go, that's not a terrible place to be because Jeremy doesn't have much of a shot for a 20 there. So just opted to get the off, kept his shooter in. And uh, let's see what Simon can make of that. His follow-throughs are very, very good. He was uh, true to form, getting aggressive going after that 20. And uh, he's potentially set Ron up for a nice touch 20 coming up the line. Or this is what some players will opt to do. It's more of a follow-through angle. And uh, if, if Ron had uh, swung all the way over to his right and come up that line, it, was, it may be an easier 20, but definitely not the off. It really is a personal preference, what the, what the player likes to go with. Nice shot from, uh, from Mark. And uh, wisely, he just went for a touch 20. I think if he had tried to get the off as well, he probably wouldn't have gotten the 20. So, yeah, Dowrick and Boot are up two 20s to one. But do not have the hammer in this round. All right, now Ron's got a, he's got to shoot to the far side of the board, but he's got a fair size alley to shoot through there. So now, even though Tracy and Langell are down a 20, having three on is not a bad position to be in. So uh, the Brits, Boot and, sorry, Lord Boot and uh, Dowrick are going to be looking for, uh, looking for a double or what they've very successfully done here. That's a fantastic hide. There's not a lot of dish showing. Jeremy does pull off that shot through Hogan's alley. So they're back to having three on. <laughs> a little bit of uh, tomfoolery going on. A little bit of trash talk and good-natured fun. <laughs> yeah. Tracy and Langell discussing strategy. They're looking to get their discs separated. The idea is they don't want to. They don't want to open up any possibility uh, of a double, but they have left the possibility of an angle in twenty. <laughs> it's one of the things I love about playing with Simon and uh, and Mark is that they absolutely roast each other when there's any sort of an error. All in good fun. They're good buddies and a lot of fun to hang out with around the crocodile board. Now it does set uh, does set Simon up for potentially a double takeout, but that would still leave uh, still leave two dark discs on the board. Unfortunately, Simon lost his shooter in that process, so now it even opens up for Ron. He drains that twenty. Now they're tied in the twenty cup and still have two on. So now the pressure is really on. Boot needs to drain a twenty here off this angle in. Good try. Again. Leaving, uh, leaving Jeremy a tough shot. Oh, I was going to say it wasn't that tough of a shot. And then I see, uh, yeah, a pretty, uh, pretty unforced error there because there's definitely enough dish showing. He should have been able to pull that off. There goes the Brits trashing each other again in good fun. Boot telling uh, telling Simon make sure he keeps his shooter on this time. Now we're winding down. Tracy and Langell each have a shot, and uh, Boot only has one. Boot and, and Dowrick only have one button left. So yeah, they're uh, Team Canada is set up fairly well here. Boot almost needs to drain a twenty to put. Uh, they're looking at the angle in to the right, that one out in the 10. If he can drain an angle in 20 off of that, then uh, it would force it would force Jeremy to try to get a follow through into that 15 in order to tie. But that is that is a tough, tough shot to get a 20 off that angle. As it stands, pretty much all he needs to do is uh, take out one of those. The one on the far side of the board from him is going to be the easier takeout rather than worrying about driving an opponent's button all the way through the house that can can lead to disaster. This should be a fairly safe and easy takeout for him. <laughs> hmm. 
he does successfully get that takeout. So that ties the match at two points each. The um, Yeah, the hammer is held strong in each of the first two rounds, which I would say I really enjoy a crokinole match that comes down to the last two or three shots of a round in order to determine the winner. That is, that's always a fantastic sign that it's a, a good competitive match. Uh, it was a perfect line by Boot. He just a little strong and bounced back a little bit, which was a nice setup. Jeremy drains that hanger 20, putting them up now 220s to 1. Ron, when he finds his groove, he is uh, pretty sharp on those open 20s. Boot was super close on that one. Just uh, the weight was right. His his line was just a little bit off. So he definitely didn't leave that sweet hanger 20 for Jeremy that he left last time around. It's going to take a little more skill to drain the 20 on this one. Yeah, went a little strong on that follow through and just uh, just overpowered it just a bit. Oh, Simon showing him how it's done. Great follow through 20 to bring them within one. Ron, true to form, drains another open 20, putting more pressure on Boot. Boot's catching on now. All the players are getting uh, getting lined up with their open 20s. As the Brits would say, that was a little pacey. Yep, a little bit, a uh, little bit fast coming in there. Very, very good placement by Ron. Because if you look at uh, at Boots' options here, he doesn't really have a lot to work with. He's, uh, yeah, to try to to try to catch a peg off that or do anything to even even go in for a circus twenty. There's just nothing really there to work with. I'm not laughing at the shot. I'm laughing at Simon's reaction to the shot, kind of uh, teasing his partner a little bit on uh, drilling that peg. Simon, very strong follow through. Great weight, just a little not quite straight enough. And uh, great again, a great spot for Ron. Very good defensive play from Ron this round. Again, leaving Mark's got a little more to work with this time. He could go for a follow through 20. But uh, yeah, certainly not, certainly nothing that's nice to work with. And because the pressure was on, Boot really had to go for a follow through 20. And as you can see, lost the shooter. So this round is not going to come down to the last couple shots to determine it. Which when you're on the right side of the 20s race, you don't mind seeing that. But <laughs> there's another shot that would qualify for unorthodox but effective. Ron catching that center hole and doing a little bit of a loop-de-loo. Boot going for uh, the only thing he had to try to angle in off of that. <laughs> uh, yep, some good friendly banter by the, uh, <clears throat> I'll call them gentlemen, uh, around the board. Good teasing of each other. So that, uh, that puts Tracy and Langell up two points, uh, sorry, four points to two. And, uh, and they, they overcame the hammer advantage that the Brits had on that round. So now Boot starts out with a little bit long, leaving Jeremy with a, a nice touch 20. And uh, yeah, sometimes it's nicer just to, to go for that option of the touch 20 rather than trying to get the off as well, especially when you have the hammer advantage. But uh, there's Simon asking uh, asking Lord Boot to try to do a a uh, ricochet twenty off the off the opponent's button off the peg and back in, but it wasn't the nicest setup for it. Yeah, Jeremy was looking at that one. It was a really really skinny shot from the inside, so he was able to to swing outside and punch it through, and uh, it worked out well for him that time. Not what Ron was looking for, but it actually worked out really, really well because it would be it would be very, very difficult for Boot to try to go through his own and take away that setup 20 for Jeremy. So basically, what Ron pulled off was an accidental assist to his partner in this match. Yeah, Jeremy is able to drain that touch 20. 
There's two green on, but it's not really that big a deal because they're side by each, and um, Tracy and Langell have the hammer advantage. <laughs> now, again, the uh, <laughs> the strategy that that Jeremy and Ron are going with here is more one to just to just leave Mark with a tough shot. So. Yeah, maybe not the best strategy, but we'll call that Saturday night strategy. Just when you're trying to, yeah, trying to make things awkward for your opponent. Again, that's not a bad leave because Simon's pretty much going to be forced to knock his own off if he was to go for an angle in 20. I, I'm not sure what he's up to here. I think more of a more of a follow through. He might he was able to save his own, but he didn't have the angle right to get in. Again, with uh, Jeremy and Ron having the hammer, it becomes that little bit of that chess match that Simon and Mark definitely want to get things into the middle in order to get a 20 because they pretty much have to. Um, if this continues the way it is, all Tracy and Langell have to do is make sure they win the board. Um, yeah, so when it comes down to the last shot, let's say there's a, a green in the 5 and a green in the 10, then all that has to happen with that last shot is to take out the 10. Like a hit and stick in the 10 means you'd win win on the board, which is all that it would take to win the round. So Ron and, um, sorry, Simon and Mark are trying to get back in to generate a 20, and uh, Jeremy and Ron are trying to keep it outside. So... Yeah, another great shot by Ron. Really good positioning there. I'm not saying Mark couldn't make something out of this, but it's certainly not easy. It's going to take, yeah, that's going to be a pretty aggressive shot they're talking about. He's got his own in the way for one lane he'd be looking at. The other lane, the one he's lining up for now, he's got to go half hole, which is always challenging. He does pull that off, but he wasn't able to catch any sort of pin action. And now Jeremy's just going to, oh, he did not mean to do that. I'm pretty sure he meant to uh, meant to stay out in the five or the ten, maybe. Now, if Simon had managed to stay in the ten, it would have been a tough spot. It would have been a tougher shot for Ron. Now, all he has to do is hit and stick and make sure that his shooter stays in the ten or higher to overcome that uh, green five that was left on the board. So in that situation, if Simon had been able to have, if Simon's shooter had ended up in the 10, then Ron would have been forced to try to get his, to take take a green off and get his into the 15 in order to win that round. So um, not easy to do, but yeah, that, that would have been the, the ideal situation for the green team. If Simon had a hit and stuck in the 15, then the same thing. Ron would just need to take out the one in the 15, keeping his in. Um, yeah, the button's being gone now. I hope you hope that makes sense. There's uh, uncharacteristic for Ron to miss an open twenty, especially miss it that long, and definitely advantage Brits at this point. One of these times that uh, sometimes from a spectator's perspective, it is a little bit boring to just watch this 20s race. Uh, for the players, it's definitely with every 20 that sinks, the pressure goes up and up because nobody wants to be the first one around that table to miss that open 20. Um, one, for your pride, but two, for the uh, because the later into the round it gets, um, yeah, the more the tougher it would be to come back and overcome that. Now, Boot missed and left an opportunity, but uh, Jeremy shot just, uh, yeah, he just wasn't able to capitalize. Boot corrects his, uh, his error last time, was able to drain that 20. Yeah, see, we're 7-7, seven, seven, but with uh, Simon and Mark having the, the hammer, it's such an advantage. And now Ron is missed, so they've they've uh, they're up 120, and they also have hammer, so they're really in good shape. Yep, the Simon got the sorry, the Simon got the better. The pressure got the better of uh, of Lord Boot, and he uh, picked off those pegs again. That seems to be a bit of a weak spot for him, 
And that's not uncommon for players to struggle with Hogan's Alley on one side or the other. And now Ron and Jeremy having a little bit of a chat. It doesn't look like the bump and run is there as an option. So he's going to drop to the right side. Ah, yeah. Doesn't really matter what angle you shoot from if you miss, but if he had drained that, then they still probably wouldn't have won the round, but it would have given them at least a fighting chance. Yeah, Simon makes some pay. And, uh, yeah, that was just a practice shot for practice <laughs> practice shot. Now, they've got, uh, there's so many 20s that um, Simon and Mark have one set off to the side because they're 20 holders full, and they've got one extra that is sitting sitting off to the side. Now, there's a little bit of a dissension in the ranks because uh, <laughs> I think that Simon has forgotten they've got an extra 20. He thinks Mark just cost them the round, but he didn't. Uh, even with that miss, they've still they've still won by five points. Bringing them back into this match, they're now uh, it's now Tracy and Langell are six points, Dowrick and Boot are four points. So we got a bit of a battle going on here. <laughs> uh yeah it's uh, in a way it's too bad you can't hear the banter that's going on in another way it's probably for the best that you can't um not all the not all the banter is completely pg around the board on a saturday night so yeah ron is able to get a nice touch 20 um now in this case he's left mark with a little bit of a little bit of a backboard I don't think Mark meant to hit it quite that hard because he really could have just used this to for a touch 20 um, and it would have left that green one on would have been a much better play but I think he just he just overhit that a bit and uh, not ideal but definitely not not the end of the world either oh Simon going for that touch 20. The angle was, it just wasn't quite right for what he was trying to accomplish there. So now Ron's looking at going through his own. To, he was considering doing a bump and run, but uh, opted to opted to just uh, drop to one side instead, which was probably a really good decision. Nice takeout by Mark. And this shot that Jeremy's left with is a little bit odd. Like you think there's a, a double there, but there really isn't because one's lined up so nicely with the peg. So I think, yeah, I think what he decides to do here is come from this side. So he's really just going to go for a single takeout. If you go for a double takeout in that situation, you're just asking for trouble. And sometimes you're better off to just wait and wait for a better opportunity for a double to set up. And uh, as luck would have it, Simon overpowered that angle in, lost his shooter. So now Tracy and Langell are back in pretty good shape. They're up a 20 in the 20 count, and they also have hammer. So they just need to play safely, not make any egregious errors here, and they should be, should be in great shape. Now, what Jeremy's trying to do is make sure that he doesn't leave Simon an easy angle in. And uh, ideally, it would have been centered, more centered between those pegs to not even open up this possibility here. But all in all, not bad. Oh, wow, that was a fantastic try. That would be, as the Brits would call it, a little bit pacey. Just a little too much speed. The angle was perfect, though. And sometimes the problem you go for that 20, it's almost like a 40 point swing when you don't get it because one, he didn't get the 20. And the other thing was he set Ron up beautifully for a touch 20. So yeah, that miss was a 40 point swing. So I've been referring to uh, Mark Boot as Lord Boot. That's because his, uh, I believe it was his, his daughters went and actually, um, made him an official lord he owns like a one square foot of land in scotland i think maybe maybe uh lord boot will come into the comment section and correct me here but yeah he does have official paperwork making him lord 
and he demands that we refer to him as Lord Boot around the board, actually. We don't always, but... Speaking of Lord Boot, he's got a... Not that tough of a shot, but tough to try to make something of it, like enough pace on it in order to catch a peg. Now, he was able to pull it back in a little bit, so it's uh, basically... Still keeping it in there. Jeremy's, yeah. Jeremy, I think he wanted to roll out on that one. Instead, he he, uh, he left it a little closer. Absolutely leaving Simon a drift 20 opportunity here. And he drains it. Not too pacey that time. That was, the weight and the angle were perfect on that. He just slammed that home. His partner steps in and saves him. Hammer definitely making a difference in this uh, in this round, giving the uh, team of Tracy and Langel a little bit of breathing room. They now go up to eight to four. They've got the Brits on the ropes, and uh, definitely don't want to don't want to. They'd like to finish that off in the this off in the next round. Ron to start this round. Again goes long. Jeremy slams that button back over to Ron as a just to let him know how displeased he is with that miss. <laughs> Boot makes some pay by opening up with a 20. So now they're in a 20s race, but as I like to say, uh, Ron and Jeremy are on the wrong side of this 20s race because they're racing. But uh, yeah, with the the other the other team having the extra shot left, it's that's not how you want to be racing. Mark just misses on this one. So now Jeremy's got the choice. He can either try to try to create a 20 out of this, which can be tough, not the best angle for it. The other option is to try to get the off and get away. And uh, I guess, yeah, as I'm as I'm thinking through that, to get away wasn't the best strategy because because uh, Dower can boot do have the hammer. So yeah, definitely he should have been going for the 20, which I think he was, but. Oh, yeah, the ever-aggressive Simon F. He had drained that. It would have put them in fantastic shape, but uh, may not have been the best strategy for him to go in because if they could have kept control of the board outside of the center, not giving Jeremy and Ron any opportunity for a 20, then it would have uh, strategically been very much in their favor. Nice shot by Boot. He uh, gets the off and brings his out into the 10. So giving Jeremy an opportunity here for an angle in, which he completely blunders. And, yeah, allowing them to extend play. I don't know if Simon meant to do that, but it worked out really well for him to keep that down in the five. Although now Boot has it's got a good open laneway there, but it is a long way across the board. Jeremy and Ron talking about uh, how their strategy, such as it was, worked out in their favor. Now that did put them, yeah, that miss by that miss by Boot gave them the opportunity to go up in the twenty count. Now Simon is under pressure. Now they need to get back into the center because they're behind in the twenty count. See if Ron goes for the twenty. If he does, it'd be a bit of a dagger for him to drain that. But instead, he got the, the double or the triple kiss there off the peg, losing his shooter altogether. Definitely not what he wanted. Boot on form, drains that 20, making Ron pay for his mistake. Jeremy got aggressive going for the follow-through 20 there because, man, when you have that advantage and you, you lose it, the first thing you want to do is get it right back as quick as you can. That's a really good spot for Simon to leave that because Ron is almost going to be forced to go for – it's a very tricky shot, but to uh, to bounce your shooter, to have to have the green come back into Ron's shooter and put that into the center, but it's a low percentage shot. So now they're talking about their options. I think Ron's gonna he really wants to get the off as well, not just a touch twenty. Yeah, he got the peg he wanted. It just uh, not the result he wanted. So. If Boot can keep this outside, it leaves Jeremy not much to work with. 
Now there, Jeremy clears everything because he really just feels that is, even though Simon is extremely strong on open 20s, there's always a chance. Even the best players can miss an open 20. They get nerved up, come up short, or go long. Whereas if he had let, if he had just hit and stuck out there in the 5 or 10, wherever it was, then that's pretty much a gimme shot for Simon to just, all Simon would have had to do was to get the takeout to win that round. So, um, yeah. Jeremy's strategy was to hope that Simon made a mistake, even though it wasn't likely. It was pretty much the only possibility of uh, of them coming out of that round with even a single point. Now it's back to uh, Tracy and Langell have the hammer advantage in this round. And Boot starts out with a 20s miss, but then Jeremy promptly sets Simon up for a touch 20. Not even a touch 20, and off in the 20. It was a great shot by Simon. It's almost like Jeremy and Ron don't want to win this round. I don't know I don't know what they're doing. Coming up short, going long. That, <laughs> that was, again, unorthodox, but possibly not all that effective as he set Jeremy up to uh, get back in control there with that 20. So now here's the question. If Ron's feeling super confident, if he's able to drain this 20 on an angle, and it would be great, the challenge in going for it is he brings play back into the middle, which is what the team of Dower and Boot want, and it is not what Tracy and Langell want. So he does, he opts to stay out, and not only that, but he left it in a great spot. The only, I was going to say, the only opportunity for Boot to go for a 20 would be for him to swing way over to the left, which would be his offside, being a right-handed shooter. What they've decided to do instead is to go for that assist. Placement of the green is really good. The placement of the uh, of the brown disc wasn't ideal to set Simon up, but anything back in the center would gives your partner a a look at least. Simon setting up to go for a double here. Yeah, he got the double, but he also lost his shooter in the process. So. And again, Ron makes him pay by draining that open 20. He's really catching his groove now. Uh-oh. And as happens sometimes, Boot came up short. He did the, the affectionately known Steve of coming up short of the, uh, of the center circle. Very rare that you see this on a, on a Tracy board, but uh, we have what's called a leaner. That, that disc was leaned. It wasn't flat in the bottom, so play continued. And Ron just knocked it right out of there. Now Tracy and Langell are up 220s and they have hammer. So all they have to do is keep it outside. And Simon's getting creative. He's trying to come off that button, catch a peg, come back into the middle. It, it really is, yeah, he caught the peg. He just didn't, uh, he caught too much of it and kicked out. They really are in, uh, well, that's the dagger. It's mathematically impossible now for him to come back. But yeah. When Simon was shooting, it really is Hail Mary time. You may as well just go for broke. And, uh, yeah. Final shot of the round for Tracy and Langell to win this first match. 10-6. to six, Pretty good battle. A lot of those rounds came back to the final shot. And uh, check back soon. We're going to be having the other, all the other combinations of partners have a go to declare the, the best sharpshooter of the night in this particular battle of the basement. So thanks for tuning in, and we will see you soon.